Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Do you remember that kid who used to stand behind Helga Pataki on Hey Arnold and breathe over her shoulder like this? While she was like professing her love to football head and I don't know, adding a lock of his hair to her shrine. Unfortunately, that's me today. So feel free to punch me in the face if I am invading your personal space or distracting you from the giant head made out of chewed gum that you're making in your locker. Um, yeah, because I'm gross and I have, I have a cold. I have a cold and I'm being a baby about it, all right? Despite that, just, I'm going to be brave and despite my cold, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but seriously, despite my cold, um, here's a little trigger warning. Uh, I can still do it. It's, it's fine. The show must go on. Now say it with me, kids. Even though Sobcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and being sober at weddings. Yup, because today we're talking about alcohol or lack of alcohol, I guess I should say. Um, I wanted to talk about my decision to not drink anymore and how my little journey has gone, how it's been affecting me recently. Um, I do want to stress that I in no way think that sobriety is like for everyone. I don't think it's a, (laughs) I don't think it's a requirement. I don't think that it's going to help everybody the same way it helped me. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not an expert in this at all. This is completely my situation. And maybe you take some things away from it, even if the thing that you take away from it is that your situation is so different from mine that what I did won't work for you in the same way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you aren't familiar with my story um three years ago about I stopped drinking I had already like stopped trying to smoke weed it just never worked for me we don't even have to talk about that I mean it just always made me either super anxious or just like made me feel like there were little spiders crawling in my bones. I I just never liked it. It never worked out for me. I'm jealous of everyone who can smoke weed and have like an amazing time. I truly am. And don't tell me, do not tell me it's because I haven't smoked the right kind. I've tried. Anyway, I decided to stop drinking when I started taking Lexapro. Mm. Partly because the bottle said that I would get dizzy if I (laughs) drank after taking the medicine. And partly because I just really wanted to give Lexapro a fighting chance. Like, I really wanted the pill to have a clear pathway to my brain. And I didn't want anything stopping it. So, it kind of started out as like, I'll, you know, try giving up alcohol while this starts working and eventually it just became like an official decision and a decision that I keep making over and over again. I have not gone through any programs. I did not go to rehab. Um and I I think I'm very lucky. Um and Also, because I made the decision on my own and have been able to stop drinking, I feel a little weird sometimes using the word sober 
because I think I've always felt like the word sober is earned. Um, I really admire people. I see them posting on Instagram, you know, like screenshots of that one app where it keeps track of how long you've been sober. Um, I actually have purposefully not kept track of how long it's been. I know it was sometime in August, um, 2018. Um, but I haven't kept track because I think somewhere in my brain, there's a possibility that's, I don't know what the number is, but if I hit a certain number that my brain will be like, okay, we tried that long enough. Like, let's, let's give up now. Um, so I usually say like, I don't drink or sometimes I get way too creative. (laughs) And, uh, anyway, that just leads to more questions. So oftentimes I just like say no to alcohol and, you know, move on and it doesn't have to be a discussion. Um, should we get into my past a little bit? Should we? I think it might help. Maybe it'll help you understand. Maybe it'll help me understand. You're my therapist. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So I grew up in a house where there wasn't a lot of alcohol. My parents, um, don't drink they so rarely drink. I mean, and when they did, it would be like they always like made a point of having a two drink minimum. Um, I think like the only out of the ordinary times that I remember uh, my dad drinking was that he maybe would have a really stressful day and he would <laughs> come home and make a mudslide, which is like a basically a chocolate milkshake with a little bit of alcohol in it, which for some reason I find so adorable and sweet. Um, And never ever saw them tipsy or drunk or anything like that. Um, I am also the oldest child in every sense of the word. I was like the oldest kid in my neighborhood. I was the oldest kid of my whole family. And, um, I never really had anyone showing me, um, another story of alcohol, if that makes sense. Um, unless it was like on TV, which I'll tell you is always like the most dramatic version, right? So I kind of thought of alcohol as like what bad kids did. I don't know. I never... I didn't really get into it in high school, honestly, because my friends didn't really get into it in high school. Um, I think maybe if, especially if some of my older friends that I looked to because I didn't have anyone older to look to, um, if they had started drinking, maybe it would be different. But um, I don't know. I think they did drink sometimes and maybe just didn't even invite me, which is totally fine. I was kind of the baby. Mm, Whatever. Um, I think when I was like 15, 16, uh, I had a friend, my oldest friend over, um, we hadn't seen each other in a long time and we got to talking and we were talking about how we should just have our first drink together so that we could get it out of the way. And when people asked us about our first drink, like (laughs) we could just, (laughs) we could say we'd done it. It's, uh very similar to like how I had my first kiss or like, (laughs) I don't know. I think a lot of people like how they lose their virginity. Oh my God. I hate that term so much. Excuse me. How people have sex for the first time. I don't know. Sometimes on TV. I don't know what I'm saying. You know, when people are like, I just want to get it out of the way. Well, that was us. And because there was so little alcohol in my house, I grabbed a glass, like an eight, 12 ounce glass. And, um, poured the only thing that we had, which had been a gift, and it was um, Desaruno. I'm probably saying that incorrectly. Um, It's an amaretto, which is definitely meant to be sipped from like a teeny tiny glass. (laughs) It's basically cough syrup. (laughs) Uh, You might have seen the commercials. It's like a beautiful Italian man and woman on their yacht. (laughs) 
And this was like me and my childhood best friend in our like little sweatpants that we rolled down to seem cooler. Um, and I just filled the glass absolutely completely to the top. Um, got caught immediately because I was not stealth. Um, yeah, my mom caught us and yelled at me a lot. And yeah, you know what? That's fine. That was being dumb. And also, it was probably a really, really expensive glass of wasted Desaruno. <laughs> oh my god! When I say when I say the name of that alcohol, it sounds like I'm talking about Desaruno. Like <laughs> it sounds like not glamorous. <laughs> anyway, that was the extent of my drinking experience in high school. I was very much like so wrapped up in musical theater and stuff I just I don't know I wasn't I didn't feel like I was like missing anything I also didn't feel like I um needed anything in terms of uh becoming outgoing um high school I loved meeting new people in high school and I loved like dating and it I didn't feel like I needed an aid with that um so, so then I went to college and definitely had it in my mind like, okay, everyone's going to be drinking and it's just going to be like beer and mistakes and blah, blah. and um, I kind of somehow avoided it mostly like the first semester of college. I don't know what I was doing. I must have just been eating pizza, honestly, or just like not. I just didn't know where to go or what to do. I was, like, very worried about my grades my first semester of college, I guess. Um, I don't know. I had, I know I was having fun, but I don't know what I was doing. Um, Then second semester of college, I think I felt a lot more comfortable. I had a group of friends that I trusted and, um, you know, we started drinking and um, I almost immediately fell into... What well, would become a pattern, which is that I would drink a little too much and uh, do something I wouldn't normally do when I was sober. At least that's what I told myself. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would like make out with strangers at bars, which I mean, I guess I could do now if I wanted. I guess it just would seem so silly <laughs> to me, although I am an adult now. Are there any bars where you can just go and make out with someone? Definitely in COVID times, that does not seem sanitary. Even then, I don't think that was sanitary. Definitely got sick a lot. I always had a, I always had a cough, like constantly. It's disgusting. Anyway, um, definitely chalked up that experience to, oh my God, I'm just having fun. I'm in college. And you know what? It was super normal, actually. Uh, Everyone I talked to about those experiences were like, oh, yeah, that's fun. Like, totally normal to drink a pitcher of beer by yourself and then make out with some guy from the Navy who's visiting Washington, D.C. for like two nights. Maybe I worry about that girl, (laughs) my past self. I'm like, hey, honey, why don't you come over and and just hang out here? We'll watch a movie. Um, You don't need to be doing that. I, I feel like I put myself at a lot of unnecessarily dangerous situations, and I feel lucky that I'm okay. So, anyway, anyway, um, the next, like, phase of alcohol stuff, um, I dated someone who was a little, little older than I was, and I think he kind of taught me how to drink like an adult um, because he'd been to Italy. So he knew what classy drinking looked like. (laughs) Um, That was a time where I learned how to like sip hard liquor. I think I practiced with whiskey. You know, we would just have like a little nightcap and um, I didn't want to be like making a face and showing how grossed out I was by it. So I literally practiced, which 
ended up becoming a problem later in life when I was so able to hide um, when I was taking a shot, if that makes sense. Foreshadowing. Um, <clears throat> that breakup hit me really hard. I was feeling like so not myself and I started drinking a lot more in order to make a bunch of mistakes. Like it was my excuse. Um, I just wanted to like make out with everyone. I wanted to be wild. Um, I mean, and I would like, I remember one time I like drank too much at a party and you like wore white and they were like spraying paint on everyone. And I woke up the next day so sick and I kept throwing up different colors of paint. Like, I was so drunk I was like drinking paint. That's disgusting. Okay. You're better than that. <laughs> I'm laughing out of discomfort. Um, I made some mistakes that carried into my not drunk life. Um, I would say things I didn't mean to friends. I would just complicate things for like reasons for no reason. Like the drama. Ew. It's so sad. Um, and, uh, I regret no, I don't regret. I just feel bad for my former self, like how much I was affected by my relationships with guys because then my next heartbreak and like watching the guy I liked being with other girls and it was like very like out in the open drama, whatever, I started day drinking and I started drinking um before everyone else started drinking if that makes sense I would like pregame the pregame and I think by that point I had um turned 21 so I could buy whatever and I would like oh god so gross do you remember 99 apples it was like 99 proof vodka and it tasted like Jolly Ranchers. I can literally taste it right now thinking about it and it, my stomach is clenching. Like, it's so disgusting. Um, it's poison, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and maybe it would have been okay if I just had, like, one shot of that and then, um, I don't know, watched a movie or, like, went out to dinner or, like, went to a bar that was close to where I lived or something. But no, I was like getting on the metro and drinking more. And I remember, I mean, like a low point. Um, is this okay? Is this okay that I'm telling you this? I worry about you. I don't want you to take on my uh, baggage. So just take a second and make sure you're okay. Is that is that? Sabe? <laughs> All right, because I love you. Okay, I'm going to keep talking now, but I hope you're okay. Um, that senior year of college, trying to decide what I was going to do, where I was going to move, hearing everybody talk about life like they had it figured out. Now I know that they were probably as insecure as I was, but at the time I really felt lost. Even though I had a great plan. I had a great plan. I could have trusted myself. Um, That combined with this guy and heartbreak and just like a lot of disappointment that I think I just took that um, was had so much more weight because I was already like staggering under the weight of the other big feelings that I was having. Um, combined with having, losing a huge sense of purpose too, because, um, my junior year, I got into this study abroad program that I'd been working for since the first day of college and was the reason why I was worrying so much about my grades that first semester, because I, 
I had to work for like two and a half years to like get into the program. And then once it was done, I was like, why am I doing any of this? Why don't I have to go to class? This is so dumb. I don't want to go to class. I could drink um, gin. I got into gin. Like that's where we're at. Ew. Not like a gin and tonic. Not like a nice gin and tonic. No, no. Like shots of gin. That's so gross. <laughs> and it wasn't nice. Like I didn't have a ton of money. Like I had like my little student desk job. No. Poor baby. Um. Mm, I remember um, I got asked to be, do you remember when like, those like lip dubs were a really big thing like everyone I don't know was it on YouTube I don't know like someone would hold a camera and like I remember they did it on the office and everyone would like lip sync and like have a little roll and move out of the way and um my school asked me to be like one of the main people in one they wanted to do for their website and like I drank before I went to that It was, like, a fun thing that I was going to have fun at. I was, like, chosen to do it because people trusted me. And I don't think anyone would have known. I just don't like that for myself. Like, mm. Anyway, so that was a depressive time. And I didn't know I had depression. So I obviously was not treating it. And I wasn't. I mean, I I don't think I was exercising regularly. I definitely wasn't keeping a regular sleep schedule. Um, I had no boundaries to speak of. uh, And I just didn't know what I know now. And think, how lucky am I? How lucky am I? Um, Yeah. So I'll call that phase drinking to numb the pain. (laughs) Why am I laughing? Um, okay, before I move into adulthood in this story, I do have a little advertisement for you. Are you ready? You all should start giving me challenges on how I should read these ads. Like, do you want me to try an accent or anything? Mostly I just like doing my little announcer voice, but if you have any ideas, like, let me know. Are you ready? (laughs) Sorry. Do you struggle with your mental health and feel like you have difficulty managing your emotions? Dive Through has partnered with mental health professionals to create interactive courses, including the free course, Self-Regulating Your Emotions, so you can feel like you have the tools to live a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. Actually, like, I wish I had had that in college. <laughs> I think um, even acknowledging that I had other options to regulate my emotions, like, I didn't just have to, like, pour alcohol on it and try to feel better, like, um, try to stuff it out <clears throat> would have been really great. And I went to counseling and stuff at school. Like, I knew stuff was wrong. Um, I think the student counseling there, unfortunately, wasn't equipped. Um, And also, you know what? I should give them more credit than that because also I think I've always been really good at... um, bringing my most positive self forward. I think I always have positive energy for people always because I love people. So I could really easily see myself going, have going to a counselor and just like smiling and laughing and being like, it's just a little problem. Like, don't worry about it. I was like, nothing to worry about. I just want to like talk. How are you? (laughs) You know what I mean? Oh boy. Yeah, moving on. Um, oh, yeah. So then I moved to L.A. and I just had so much going on. I definitely was drinking, but it just wasn't it just wasn't as out of control. Um, 
I do remember like drinking until I threw up, but it definitely was like with a group of people, at least. I know that sounds um, like a silly little victory, but I don't know. It's definitely different than like drinking alone before you're drinking with a bunch of people, if if that makes any sense. Um, so I think that, uh, over the next years of my adulthood until 2018, I just like went through ups and downs with alcohol. And I, I honestly, like, I don't have any memories that really stand out. Like I don't, I don't have any big embarrassing moments or anything um, except for a time um, right. So I guess it was it was 2018, but it was earlier. Um, Brett Kavanaugh was doing the stuff. (laughs) It was that thing. Oh, my, that hurts my stomach. And, um, it was everywhere. And I was working in an environment where we were reporting on it. You know, um, I was working for a website and we had to be up to date. And it was one of those things where I couldn't look away, if that makes sense. So I do remember um, my partner at the time had won this giant bottle of tequila at a white elephant party. It was like, if I put it on the ground, I think it was like up to my hip. Like it was really big. And um, I mean, this, I don't remember when this was. It doesn't really matter. Um, I remember... Like, taking shots while I was, like, making dinner and then being almost, like, drunk at dinner and then being like, hey, do you want a drink? And and making us drinks, like, as if it was my first one. I don't know. Like, I wasn't trying to lie to anyone. I just was... I just was self-medicating, honestly. I was trying so hard not to feel upset about everything that was going on. I should probably talk to my therapist about them. This is a running theme. Have you noticed every episode recently? I'm like, I should talk to my therapist about this because I should. Let's get to the, let's get to the fun part. <laughs> um, I would say that was around a point where my depression was getting really bad and if you have listened to my episode on sadness versus depression, then you know I think the difference is that depression just feels like it's never going to end. And I think it comes in so many different forms, but at that time it was manifesting as just not feeling anything. Um, like I was so void of feeling and it it felt like I had just like satted myself out like I had been so sad for so long that it I just didn't feel it anymore and so then it turned into I need alcohol to feel something what no so it would be like oh like oh you know what it doesn't matter because then in August 2018 I finally made the decision after trying so, so many different things to try Lexapro. And um, so I stopped drinking on that day. It eventually turned into just my life. And some of the benefits that I noticed right away was that I would wake up feeling good. (laughs) What? Um, I got into... Pilates and I would schedule classes at 7 a.m. and 
I would like revel in how I could wake up and get there and do a whole class and not feel like I was going to barf the whole time. Because my body is actually really sensitive. Um, Like, it's not like I was drinking and feeling great. Like, I was drinking and getting migraines. I was drinking and, like, barfing. I was drinking and feeling all muffled. I would feel cotton-headed. It just, it wasn't, it's not like it was amazing, you know? It wasn't worth the feeling bad part, I realized after a time. And again, this is just my experience. Um, The hardest part over the last few years has been gatherings. (laughs) And I've been thinking about this a lot since Halloween this year because I went to my first like party in in what felt like forever and um you know everyone was drinking it's not like everyone was like drunk but everyone was like you know sipping on something or whatever and I felt for the first time in a in a long time I was like I kind of wish I was drinking and I've been reflecting on that a lot because I'm like why I had a great time. I talked to so many people and I heard so many like beautiful stories and like I met people who were strangers and now they're my friend. Like that's so freaking cool. And if I had been drinking, I probably would have been like, yeah, I would have been more of like the life of the party. I think I always like to like get other people to drink I'm kind of that bad influence like one more shot like you can do it if I can do it you can do it you know um but just because I'm quieter doesn't mean I'm less fun Ooh, I gotta write that in my diary um I was talking to someone about it and he was like you said that it would be easier to enjoy yourself if you had had a drink and I realized it's not that I would have enjoyed myself. I would have more easily enjoyed being myself. Does that make sense? I think the past three years I've been learning to be myself despite my anxiety and depression. (laughs) Like, I have to, it takes a little bit more energy. I think I have to like burn the midnight oil, I guess. What even is that for? What am I talking about? Engineering. But it it takes more energy when I'm not drinking, but so what? <laughs> um, another memory that stands out to me is I went to a dear friend of mine from college got married and I went to his wedding and he had invited so many people that I knew from college and therefore I had forged friendships with them when I was a heavy drinker and so the vibe was a little different and you know what it might not have been different at all it just was different to me you know um and because I hesitate to use the word sober I, like, was trying way too hard to, like, say I don't drink in a creative way because people were being so sweet and kept offering to get me drinks. Um, And one person who had been an acquaintance, like, I remember, I remember, I think he might have shown me my first Bo Burnham YouTube video ever. You know that friend that you just sit at your computer with for, like, hours and just, like, watched like the first drunk history YouTube videos and just like laughed and that's like literally all you had in common but it was absolutely enough to like be good friends in college (laughs) you know what I mean um he offered to get me a drink and I said something along the lines of no I don't need a drink you'll have to drink for two and I completely understand why he would misunderstand that (laughs) 
Um, but his eyes got so big and so wide and so full of joy and love and excitement and his jaw like literally dropped like a cartoon and he was like congratulations oh my gosh I'm so excited for you Uh, and to this day like no one has ever looked at me like that ever (laughs) like wow I should tell people I'm pregnant more no just that's not nice but I don't know. I just thought that was so funny and then so sad to have to explain to him that I was just trying to say that I don't drink anymore. (laughs) Uh, And I have realized over time that I don't have to tell anyone that I'm like not drinking at all. I can just be like, I'm drinking water tonight or whatever. Because honestly, it's not their problem. It's a me problem and I've been solving it and figuring it out. So I don't really need to put that on them. I'm sorry that I'm putting it on you, though. Hi. Are you okay? I'm <laughs> just checking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, there is one other thing that I've been thinking about, which is this feeling of connection that I used to get from drinking, which I think came from okay, we're all starting drinking at the same time. We're all drinking about the same amount. Therefore, I know how you're feeling physically. Like I know about how drunk you are. So I know how to like mm, start the right conversation with you or if you're at the point where you're going to want to dance with me or when I'm going to start telling you my secrets or whatever, or, you know, when, I, when I'm going to try to make out with you. And um, at this Halloween party that I went to, I felt this space, I think, between me and um, people who started getting, like, inebriated. What a word! inebriated I'm just like I'm a thesaurus over here and I don't think that distance is is bad I think I can actually cross that distance when I want to it just takes a little extra effort and so many people who I love they're completely worth that little extra effort like I don't mind so Yeah. There was also a worry I had. There's this like stereotype of writers who drink, right? You've heard this like Hemingway was always drunk, but he was like the best writer of all time, whatever. Dorothy Parker is like one of my favorite writers ever. Um, She was one of the founders of the New Yorker. I think one of the only women And she just was such a badass and just ahead of her time and so sharp and so funny. And people like feared and loved her and her writing. And um, I don't know everything I've ever read about her. It was like, yeah, she would like drink. She would be (laughs) turning things in late. She was not mentally healthy. I won't go into detail. Um, And... Somewhere along the way, I was like, oh, that's how it, you know, it's okay that I'm like this. It's okay if I'm out of control because I'm still turning things in. And um, maybe it makes me funny, (laughs) which is really silly because there have been so many times where I was like, I'm going to drink a bottle of wine and start my memoirs. And you know what would happen? I would just watch like YouTube clips of Chelsea lately. And then write the next day. Like, (laughs) alcohol never made me more creative, ever. (laughs) And I'm, I'm, like, happy to realize that because that you don't have to be a suffering artist to be a good one. You heard it here first. (laughs) 
Uh, over my whole life, there have been so many things that I've like given up. Like I gave up meat for a long time and was vegetarian or like I gave up gluten for a second. Um, I've given up sugar. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I should talk to my therapist about that one too. But um, I've broken that promise to myself a lot. Or it just didn't fit in my life anymore. I remember I'd given up meat for a long time because I would eat the meat at the in the cafeteria at my school and it would give me a migraine like almost instantly. So I was like, okay, I, I don't think I can trust myself to just not get a cheeseburger at, at the cafeteria or like a turkey sandwich. So instead I'm, I'm going to have to give it a, like I, it's all or nothing. And, um, then I moved to LA and someone was like, do you want an In-N-Out burger? And immediately I was like, yeah, (laughs) years of not me eating just, I don't know, (laughs) out the window. But, um, you know, I'm not sure if there'll be a time in my life when I drink again. I like very much wish that I could be a person who has a glass of wine with dinner. I just know that I've never been that person. So I would have to discover that side of me. Who knows? Every time I've tried to predict the future... It turns out so much better or so much worse than I ever could have imagined. So I've decided not to try telling the future anymore. Uh, just, just live in the now. And right now, drinking is not right for me. So I'm so curious to hear your stories if you want to talk about it. Um you know, definitely feel free to leave comments on our Instagram, Sobcast the Podcast. And um, if you are kind of examining your relationship with substances, like, just know that I love you. And it it's okay that it's hard. <laughs> it is. It really is. Like, I, we should probably do another episode on just, like, how society treats drinking and, and smoking as so casual that like it's almost like lame if you don't do it I don't know you know what that's also something I've internalized or like made up for myself too so we're learning together okay have a really good week I love you bye Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.